Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie, and today I'm here to give you a bit of an update on the uh, DVD room or the movie room or the man cave or the yada yada yada. Basically, an overview of the movie collection. Can't remember how long, but quite a long time since I didn't any kind of you know, full overview video, but this is one of those topics which people tend to come back to and sort of asking me like, you know, you should do something to show like the room and how it is now um, and I remember, you know, that I showed this I guess it would have been probably about three years ago and uh, I sort of, you know, set up all the new shelves I guess a lot of things has happened um, I've sort of, you know, shifted my collecting from like limited edition DVDs and Blu-rays to a large extent it's uh, much more videotapes now like old Swedish VHS releases and just just more more vintage retro stuff I guess and not so much limited editions per se like new limited editions but sometimes I do that too but just generally so anyway I'm standing in the living room now actually um, not sure if you want to see this but whatever I have the movie room over here. It's just just one room, so you know I don't really have like the whole uh, home cinema whatever setup. But I do have my movie room, and it's actually a joint uh, movie room slash office basically. So uh, I have my. Uh, I was supposed to close this door. I can't believe I missed it. This is just like for clothes. There's nothing, you know, funny in here. It's just a wardrobe. But yeah, I have my, or we have our little office space. Me and my girlfriend here. And then uh, we have all of my shelves. These are basically all IKEA. It's Billy bookshelves, and then the uh, slim shelves in between. I know I've, you know, probably mentioned this in the old videos. Uh, but the slim shelves, uh, like the one. Uh, Right there, the ones that are cut off in the corners. That's actually uh, Benno, uh, Benno CD shelves. But they're also from IKEA and they work really well together. So um, yeah, I basically have like a similarity to the whole layout of the room. But uh, yeah, this is basically it. And then that's the door where I walked in. And then there's the wardrobe. So close this door. Hope the lighting works in here. I think we're gonna be okay. So yeah, where the fuck do I begin? I guess I'll start with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection over that corner. And this is not gonna be like a full rundown. I'm not gonna talk about every individual release because quite frankly, I would never have the time to edit such a video. And I doubt it would be especially interesting to watch. But uh, these are all my Texas Chainsaw Massacre releases. It's basically my main passion when it comes to the collection these days. And these are all releases of the first film and uh, formats range from videotapes to DVDs and Blu-rays, Super 8 copies, Betamax, laser discs. you know it's just it's a very wide range of stuff and you know these are all my uh, Australian releases here. I sort of was thinking that I should sort of uh, arrange them or at least, you know, arrange the uh, Texas Chainsaw releases based on country because it's starting to become so many of them that it's really hard to keep track of what I got and, and, and not. But um, I do a little bit of display uh, here as well, but seeing as, you know, I have so, so many Texas Chainsaw releases now, it's coming to the point where I really have to sort of just arrange them for storage, so to speak. I can't really display everything. And back here I have some additional laser discs. I mean if you want to see the full Texas Chainsaw collection, like actually see me show you every release, you can check a video I did a while back where I, you know, talk about the TCM collection and sort of show everything in the collection. So here are some more laser discs and stuff and uh, there's also some additional laser discs in the back for other movies because I don't really have the, the space to put them anywhere else. But uh, apart from the stuff in the back there, it's this, this is all Texas Chainsaw. Just Texas Chainsaw documentaries, put them in a specific place. Then we got some small clamshells. Then we got all of my small carton releases as well. You know. There's, there's stuff in the back too, you know, it's don't really have the, the space to, to uh, yeah, do much else. So yeah, more videotapes and beta and some bootlegs and yeah. And we got more DVDs, more Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw and uh, yeah, this is 
It's quite a lot of copies for just one movie. And then over here in the corner are just some stuff I had for sale, but they're basically sold already. Ah. So that's the Texas Chainsaw collection. And uh, yeah, then we got a window here, and you'll notice that I have these lower shelves here. And there, these are basically custom, custom built or customized. They are regular Billy bookshelves. It's an older model uh, with a 60 centimeter width. It was actually one shelf to begin with, but I basically just chopped it up and put them side by side. The Billy shelves are really easy to modify in case you want to do that. But to just looking at what I got down here, I think I'm getting some yellow tone on the camera now. It does that every now and then. I think I should buy a new camera. Feels like it might be time. But anyway, here are some um, basically like documentaries and animation. I don't have too much of this, so I sort of put that in this shelf. And right down here are my uh, I don't know what you would call them. Like all of my what the fuck tapes, where it's just you know I go to flea markets and stuff like that, and I pick up these tapes which nobody else would want. You know, it's basically like these weird documentaries, like stuff you get that are like made for companies, like instructional videos or, or you know like learning how to drive or whatever, stuff that's issued for like uh, I don't know, like, like weird stuff, like promotional tapes from churches or uh, you know these special TV segments on video violence and how it's sort of destroying today's youth and here's like a promotional showreel from some kind of company that makes commercials so you know, it's all it's all kind of weird stuff like video magazines like you know here's a MTV video magazine I don't know if they ever made more than one uh, the coca-cola video show it's just you know trailer tapes and just really weird tapes and they sort of you know have a couple of more of those here and then when we sort of get over to basically around here <laughs> I started collecting these for some reason, and it's not a major passion or anything, but I, I started buying these sort of uh, uh, video cable hookup kits. Uh, it sounds really weird, but let me just explain. This is a video slat sats, or a video wire kit. Uh, and it's basically just a regular VHS clamshell, but it comes with... It's just a bunch of cables, there's no actual tape, so it's just just cables uh, in case you want to like hook up your VCR or convert stuff from between two VCRs, just like a wire kit. So for some reason or another I started picking these up at flea markets for no apparent reason. Got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's a cleaning because that's but whatever. I don't know, just I like weird stuff, you know, you know, which sort of pick it up and you go like, well, this is stupid. And um, then up here are, oh yeah, here are documentaries, I just realized. Small documentary section, just, ah, it's just really mixed, and it's dusty as hell. I'm really bad at dusting off my collection. Well, this looks odd, I'm not gonna explain this. But in the back here, I got some old Swedish label called Walter's Video, and got some classics right here. The house, wh wh what is this called? The house that God... For God, I'm just reading the Swedish title. No, it's the Amityville Horror. I was trying to translate the Swedish title. So yeah, just uh, you know, some old, old Swedish tapes. Moving up here, I've tried to sort of organize things a little bit. The thing is that I have so many DVDs from my DVD collecting days when I was buying limited editions and stuff, and it's too much of an effort to try to sell them all. Seeing as you know, I'll probably not get the money back. From what I paid for them so I decided to yeah I'm just gonna keep them but I'm trying to hide them a little bit or sort of make room for for new videotapes and, and things like that so uh, I try to uh, ah, all right sorry about that so I tried to somewhat organize them based on genre or sort of sub genre I guess and here are basically my sci-fi slash uh, post-apocalyptic uh, weirdo future the world is doomed uh, kind of stuff virus films and sci-fi movies and just in the back here I got all my old DVD editions sort of lined up and you know I don't I'm not so much a collector based on you know like quantity I never really cared for that I'm more about the individual releases this is not stuff that I've bought recently but these are all uh, from back when I was collecting limited editions, and you know, I didn't. I only bought limited editions. Like every every single release uh, in this, you know, in these rows, 
And basically all the stuff, most of the stuff you see stacked in the back like this, uh, like throughout the room, uh, all the all the the DVDs and the Blu-ray editions and stuff that's stacked like this, that's basically all limited edition. Every single one of these. I didn't actually buy like regular keep cases. It's like whatever whatever we pull out here is gonna be like you know it's gonna be a limited edition steel book or it's gonna be like some weirdo first press diggy pack that people generally didn't get back then. So yeah, it's sort of arranged by, by subgenre, but it's all limited editions which were really collectible at the time. This is like a Japanese, comes with this nice transparent slipcase. And you know, I guess to some extent I still feel uh, pretty nostalgic about this, you know, it was sort of the the beginning of the limited edition era and you know in my opinion this is sort of like a, a bubble which has basically burst now you know I don't really I don't really find it too interesting to collect limited edition blu-rays and DVDs anymore because when I started out it was very much a hunting process where you would try to find these rare rare versions from from a lot of different countries and it was just really it was there was an excitement to it whereas today every single movie gets released as limited edition and by that standard it's just um, I don't know for me it's sort of uh, it wasn't as fun anymore for some reason so now I now I mostly buy like based on artwork and a lot of the time I buy these cheap old VHS editions just because I like to display them like this and as you can see here's also another one of these shelves where I have you know I have a whole row set up in the front and then I have a bunch of DVDs in the back and this particular shelf I've decided to dub sort of the downward spiral section meaning that you know it's all of these uh, movies which everything's just going to hell like all of these like you know Serbian film and the Requiem for a Dream and things where where everything just turns to shit and you know you sort of end up uh, with a final scene where you know everything is just you know just like the just like the worst <laughs> worst uh, the stuff where nothing uh, never really ends well uh, you know sort of like that downward spiral or or something where you know everything just goes mental fuck I'm dropping a bunch of shit Moving up, we have my my North Report collection. This is something which, you know, it's been a part of my collecting profile or my collecting life for such a long time. With some of these releases which I've come to become really associated with. Like these my North Report press kit editions, which I still value extremely. Not something I would ever sell. It's uh, uh, one kilo's worth of, of aluminum. Just a press kit uh, with, a, with a CD-ROM inside. And you know, if there's anything in the video that you want to see, you can comment or or you can just search my account because so much of this is stuff that, stuff that I've reviewed in the past. There's like a big promotional VHS box for my note report, something that was sent to um, to like video stores to promote the film. So you know, I love stuff like that, really weird things that you can't get. That's that's still a. A passion that sort of remains. Here are some more of my North Report stuff. The aluminum briefcase, which I've had for, for a number of years now, and it's not something I'm thinking I'm ever gonna sell because it was so hard to get. But all of this, you know, it's, it's stuff you can ask me about or whatever. Here are all of my Ninja Mission tapes. This is a Swedish film from the 80s, which is really cool and has a very sort of mysterious and bizarre history. And so I started buying various editions of that. And up at the top shelf, just, you know, it's just a mixed bag of various boxes. And a lot of this stuff I sort of stacked up here because uh, they didn't really fit anywhere else. They were sort of too big or too large to fit on the regular shelves. And so uh, sort of ended up putting them up here. Trying to do this without missing anything, which is always sort of a big problem. Then we have this tower right here. Just has a, I don't know, just a bunch of this and different stuff like Watchmen stuff, some Watchmen figures, which you know I don't really collect figures, but I got these as a gift a long time ago. I thought I might sell them, but I haven't really found them. But I want wanted to buy them, so I don't know. They just you know they just stick around. Yeah, I just I don't know. I'm just one of these people who who really likes to display movies, like you know getting as much artwork as possible. And uh, down here are all my uh, Coen Brothers movies. And uh, I'm not doing too much of a display at these bottom shelves because nobody really looks down here, but yeah. 
Here are all of my uh, various Coen Brothers stuff. Uh, just a major fan of Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski and Office Space are to me the like the, the probably the two two greatest comedies, like my favorite comedy films. I don't really collect comedies, you know, I'm more of a horror sci-fi kind of guy. But you know, sometimes I do buy comedies and you know, Big Lebowski and Office Space are sort of exceptions to the rule. See, then we have uh, some stuff right here, and I'm gonna pull out things because just to show that, yeah, there's there is a bunch of stuff in the back always. Yeah, I don't know. I had sort of like a theme going here with sort of like you know like badasses and 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 villains or or hitmen or something like that. You know, like all these classic cool movies uh, with awesome awesome characters. Like a lot of the times, like hitmen, like. History of Violence, you know, like Vigilantes, we got like Kick-Ass, um, you know, Boondock Saints, uh, Doberman, Sin City, Leon, Lockstock, just, you know, like all these movies where, you know, a bunch of awesome people do really awesome things, like, you know, action, basically, you know, Snatch, these kind of, these kind of films. But I don't really follow the whole thing to the full extent. Sometimes I make exceptions because I have to fit it all in here. It doesn't really work. Then we got my David Lynch corner. You know, if I have a particular director which I collect, I don't buy too much David Lynch stuff because I don't really buy too much new stuff these days at all. But here are like all my limited edition and like double dipping. You know, a lot is limited edition, but not everything. But you know, uh, a lot of it is, you know, like. Classic limited editions on DVD and, and Blu-ray and it's... Here are all of the uh, deluxe box sets that came out. Like the short films and Race Red, Dumbland, which is pretty uncommon. And Blue Bob, which I don't see a lot of. That's actually a music release from David Lynch. But uh, yeah, that's that's all in the David Lynch section. So let's gonna move up. <sighs> guess you can sort of guess what section this is. Yeah. There's my Tarantino stuff, and I don't really have a lot of Tarantino stuff, but there is some stuff stacked in the back there. Because, you know, it's hard because at some point you sort of pass this, this limit where you have too much limited editions, where it's too much and you can't, you know, I want to display everything, but you can't. So, at some point you just end up stacking stuff like this, which... You know, you have to sort of pick your favorites. My little display corner for Kung Fury, which is a awesome Swedish short film. And one of the reasons why I want to display this so much is because these two are releases which I helped to design. And there's a very detailed video on that in case you want to know more about the process. And this is also, this is a custom cover I made. And uh, seeing as I'm so involved in the process and, you know, I'm so good friends with the director and the creators now, I don't, you know, I'm not going to be selling this custom artwork to anyone. So you can just stop asking because, I don't know, it's just one of these things which I would never do unless, you know, I had the creator's uh, permission, so to speak. And then we come to my Dexter section. Here's a um, Ice Truck Killer uh, replica doll, which I made myself, but it's made from the exact type of doll used on the show. It's actually a really rare doll, it's very hard to find these days because it's discontinued and stuff, but yeah, it's the actual, actual doll type, which is... Uh, kind of dusty, but yeah. Then I got like my um, Blood Slides uh, box replica, which I didn't make. It's made by an awesome uh, craftsman. And uh, yeah, just some various, you know, this is just season two, and that's just because I got a limited edition release of it from Australia. And you know, so a lot of these times I don't even have the entire show. I just really like it and I like promotional stuff and I want to display them like this. And then uh, here is my sort of, I don't know, like Texas Chainsaw Remakes corner, I guess. Got like the new the steel book and like some older limited editions, some promo material for, I don't know, I don't remember if it's the remake or the beginning or whatever, but one of those, like an evidence bag with stuff. And um, let's see, where do I go from here? Just go through the, like the tower here or some VHS tapes, um, just, I don't know, I just try to pick out movies which, you know, I really like, I like the artwork for, it's some more Kung Fury, I also try to do this thing, like here where I have a particular corner for, like, here's one for Richard Stanley, who directed Hardware, and then I sort of try to put, like, a copy of Hardware for display in the tower, 
just like here where I have all my phantasm stuff and then I put a phantasm tape. So I tried to do that in sort of the same way here where I have Can Fury and then I put Can Fury display here as well. But yeah, there's just there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, see down here are my found. I don't have a lot. Of, this is like my found footage corner. I'm a big, big fan of found footage, but I don't have too much. You know, I watch a lot of stuff, but I don't have too much collectible. Probably because there's, you know, a lot of time it's not too much limited editions that I found for these movies, and I don't really want to buy movies just to buy them. You know, I don't want a bunch of keep cases because I don't have room. But you know, should I find cool limited editions of movies like, you know, like here for VHS? Uh, or, you know, things like that. There's a Cloverfield tin from Australia. Like, if I find limited editions like that, then, you know, I might buy them, but... Otherwise, you know, you have to sort of make room to some extent. Uh, let's see, here are some films which are basically, like, cool sort of mystery movies. Like Brick and, and Vantage Point and... You know, like all these, all these awesome mysteries, things that start with a mystery and sort of have this particular t tone to it. I just love Brick. It's an awesome film. One of these things which you can't watch too many times, it just has an awesome atmosphere. Definitely my favorite... Um, ah. I can't even remember the director's name now, but yeah, uh, it's it's an awesome film. Love Brick. Let's see, then we got uh, some VHS tapes, and now I've sort of started arranging stuff. Uh, the VHS tapes here, like the vintage tapes, which I picked up on flea markets and stuff, it's just, I started arranging these based on label. This is the problem, you know, I collect so much different stuff based on so many different factors and then you sort of end up with so many different subcategories but here I got like all my VHS tapes from a particular label called MDC Video the Swedish label I don't know what to say it's just uh, a bunch of different films some of which I haven't even seen this is really cool I, I have no idea I haven't seen this this, this is with Jennifer Jason Lee. it's called Anorexia just picked it out because it felt like such a ridiculously stylish cover and a lot of the time that's sort of what it, what it's like made for TV movie, like a two tape release which is like narrated by um, Morgan Freeman or something and it's just ha never heard about it so you know, a lot of this is about the fact that I buy videotapes it has a lot to do with sort of finding movies which you would never find otherwise, and sort of getting to watch films on video, which I think is really cool actually. I, I still sort of have a nostalgic feel about that. And I've never been much for, you know, having to need like top picture quality. So I, know, I think watching a, a video, an actual video, it's a nice relief to sort of do every now and then, just to get that really bizarre feel and watch something that you probably nev never would have picked up otherwise. Here's like my natural born killer section, which Ah, it just has a bunch of stuff stacked in here, uh, which yeah, you can tell it's just, it's basically too small a shelf. But that's sort of the way I try to do it. I try to display stuff up front, you know, that looks like this. And then I know if I'm gonna go pick up something by um, Tarantino or, you know, watch Natural Bull Canners, I can just walk to this section and I know that I've got all my uh, releases in the same place. Up here are some laser discs, which are basically just here because it's one of the few shelves where I can place laser discs. So here we got hardware once again. Richard Stanley hardware, yeah. And also Natural Born Killers, more Natural Born Killers, and you know, just, just some boxes that are too big to place anywhere else. Then we got the Richard Stanley section, director of Dust Devil and Hardware, which are two really awesome films, which I like. Then we got my Phantasm section with like videotapes. Got a copy on 8mm film, it's really cool. But overall, not a, not a major collection, but I tend to double dip on these sometimes just when I find really weird editions, because I think the Phantasm series is just, I don't know, it's just really, really cool like to double dip on it just for that and uh, yeah then we're up at the top again you can just continue up here and sort of go through this real quick this is a section which has never really been featured or talked about i think and it's also a section which is pretty new to my collection and this is like the vintage porn section 
yes, I do collect vintage porn. I don't know what this poo is doing here. <laughs> I didn't know where to put it, um, so it just, it has nothing to do, I don't, it's not poo porn or anything, I just, I don't know, it's just a cute, you know, I don't know, whatever. Started collecting certain stuff like, you know, we got here, like the, here's a Terminator uh, porn spoof, which I just picked up because I really liked the cover and because it's, it's fun owning things like this, you know, I don't, I don't have a, any kind of, you know, sexual interest in this, I don't, generally, you know, get off on, on 70s and 80s porn because, I don't know, it's weird. Um, <laughs> but from a collectible standpoint, I think it's really cool and a lot of fun to pick these up. And here's a bunch of um, tapes which are, they're, they're like adult animated cartoons. I'm trying to think of what I can show and not. Can I show X-rated animation? I don't know. But yeah, it's basically a lot of these weird tapes like these really old adult comics, which, I don't know, a lot of it's from Germany. Hmm. It's just, you know, I like to collect stuff that sort of could, you know, people can come here and they can sort of, you know, grab something and, uh, and sort of be like, uh, okay, I don't, you know, people will sort of be like, what the fuck is this? How can, does this even exist? And that's just the thing like with these old animated adult cartoons. Uh, and, and a lot of the same reasons why I got into collecting vintage erotica. And I can't, there's a lot of stuff I, I can't really show here because it's like X-rated covers and stuff. But uh, over here is some, uh, some of my really old stuff. Got like uh, Super 8 pornography. Uh, like actually on Super 8. God, I'm wondering if there is there anything I can show? Porn is one of these weird subcategories which I remember I talked about this when I did a review for like this. I have this somewhere. Um, this short collection of short films uh, called Dirty Diaries, which I just I was just amazed by this because it's such a stylish cover. And I had never seen, it's a limited edition digipack, and I was so amazed uh, by the fact that it's 12 shorts of feminist porn, but just the fact that they really released something so graphic and so erotic as any kind of limited edition was just weird to me, because porn is generally not a category which people buy for its collectible value, so to speak. And based on that, you know, nobody's gonna release limited edition porn because there's not really a general market for it. But I started collecting this because I just I just love the fact that somebody <laughs> released, you know, this is the movie Frenzy by Alfred Hitchcock. And this is uh, an, a Super 8 reel, but it's just like selected scenes because they can't fit the whole movie on, on a single reel. But what's incredible about this, this is a selected scenes, great scenes series. And the only scene on this is the rape scene. Which, why would, ugh, it's like, yeah, somebody just released the rape scene from Frenzy. It's so weird. I love weird. So yeah, uh, yeah, then we got some more, more porn tapes, but it's all like these old films, not like I buy like new porns, you know, and this is all, you know, it's for collectible value. I have no real sort of practical use for this. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what I can show and what not to show. I don't know, can I show this? Can't actually see her tits, so I guess it's not unrated. I mean, there's an, a lot of stuff in here, but I like the look of, like, look at porn. I'm not gonna talk about porn anymore. If you want to see me talk about porn, we can do that another time, but not now. Moving on to something quite different. Here is my Warner Brothers section. And doesn't go for DVD or Blu-rays, it's just a matter of VHS and beta. So here are some uh, Warner Brothers tapes, sort of based on uh, like label style, I guess. Because they have like various uh, styles uh, in various countries and various eras. And um, then we get some uh, tapes just stacked in the front like this. And there's really, there's actually no collection behind here. I've sort of jammed uh, some stuff in there, just like a couple of boxes and things. Full of, uh, you know, yeah, just general things I want to have in here. Like, I don't know, just trinkets and stuff. Whatever. So yeah. Uh, and the same goes for this side. And we got more from the same label. This is from, I even forget what the label is called now. It's called Prisma. 
Prisma film and video. Yeah. Then we got my Video Dynamic Bahrain, which is a Swedish bootleg label, which I tend to uh, purchase just because I like the strangeness, the history of them. Yeah, it's just a bunch of these sort of classic horror films, I guess. Uh, or weird, weird films. And we got some more, just, you know, just showing covers here. And in behind, here, in behind. Is that the way to say it? I don't know. But yeah, here are some additional, like, horror films. Like DVDs and Blu-rays. And like I said, basically whatever I whatever I pick out, it's like, you know, it's a limited edition from somewhere. Um, and a lot of these are, you know, it, it's so early and old limited editions that a lot of this might be things that uh, collectors today might not actually have uh, seen. Because it's, it's from a different era of limited editions. And, you know, most of these, or a lot of these, are probably, I'm not saying all, but a lot of them. There's a lot of stuff in the DVD and Blu-rays that are virtually impossible to find today because they're so old and they were so, they were so early in the era of uh, limited editions. Let's see, this... Yeah, this shelf is basically, I think, yeah, it's all Swedish releases uh, of old, old uh, VHS tapes. But it's basically things where I only have one particular tape from that particular label. And then they sort of ended up here. So the films themselves don't really have anything to do with each other. Then over here. These bottom shelves are somewhat unorganized. Alright. Someone texting me. That's just gonna have to wait. Yeah. So here are some foreign tapes. It's just really mixed down here. It's just... Various things which which haven't really been organized, or I'm not really sure what to do with, so they sort of ended up here. And now I've sort of lost my way, I think. I think we're going over here. So here is some foreign tapes from various countries, because I don't ger generally pick up foreign tapes per se, but this is like stuff I found at flea markets, and I don't know. Here is a uh, Super 8 copy of uh, The Manson Murders. It's a film. I don't remember if it's made for TV or whatnot, but uh, yeah. Then we got some more covers. I can't remember if I have anything back here. No, it's just various stuff jammed in there. And here is a Swedish label. It's Sandrev's uh, video. And, you know, just various movies on the same label. I don't know, it's just, you know, it's a very mi mixed bag. I'm sorry if I'm not pulling out too many tapes, but it's just... Uh, it's just really mixed. And it's gonna take forever to do this video anyway, so... <sighs> More covers. Nothing in the back here. Or, well, nothing you need to see. Uh, another one of these shelves which I just put in stuff that's big boxes and I don't have the room to, to show it. You'll just have to ask if you see something that requires a question and an answer. Then here is my Mad Max corner. Some tapes, Blu-rays, DVDs, badges. Then we got my Wolf Creek section. Mainly DVDs and yeah, pretty much. Here's a Wolf Creek VHS case, but it's actually a t-shirt. It's only a t-shirt from this uh, t-shirt company that makes uh, t-shirts and sells them in limited edition VHS style cases. Very weird. But I love Wolf Creek, so I had to pick this up because it's a really cool marketing idea to me. Just gonna go down the tower here and I sort of uh, kept the theme with Mad Max going or things of that nature. Oh, then we got the awesome Turbo Kid VHS. Love that movie. More Conan, Austin Powers, Henry, awesome film. Let's see, then I think I'm gonna go back and film the top shelf here. That's my VHS hunting bag, which I use when I go out hunting for tapes. And uh, yeah, it's just generally, you know, boxes up here which are too big to put anywhere else, I guess. And uh, yeah. Just a bunch of different stuff. I haven't sorted them in this way for any particular reason. They're just up there because of size. Oh, here I got a stack of magazines. Talked about these in a previous video. Crime of the Week. You're just gonna have to check my uh, video which I did from the VHS Collectors Gathering in Sala. It's like a couple videos back. Then I talk more about these. Uh, but yeah, this is actually my Stanley Kubrick section. 
you can see it's a bunch of Kubrick stuff and these just they're just laying there because I need to find a place for them. Then we got my uh, Christopher Nolan section. Yeah, just various Christopher Nolan collectibles like press kits and really really rare items. Ah, this is dusty as hell. Let me just wipe this off so I can make it presentable for you. All right. Uh, okay. Don't mess up. Okay. So there we go. Now it looks much more shiny and awesome. So yeah, that's my Christopher Nolan stuff. I have more, but that's like my displayable stuff, I guess. Then here's a bit of a retro section. You got a vintage movie box, like, you know, one of these rentable VCRs in a big-ass case. Get my Nintendo, uh, my NES, Nintendo 8-bit, and some NES games. This are Swedish rental, so you actually got them in this, uh, like, a VHS-sized case. I'm not sure if, if this was a European thing, because it's not something I've seen for American versions. I mean, this is a, the typical... It's an American release of Mega Man 6, because it wasn't released in Europe. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, it's full VHS size for Metroid on 8-bit, which I love. I lo I'd love to get more of these rental cases. And here's more Nintendo. I'm sure people are curious what, uh, what the games are, but yeah, there's some games. And then we got more covers. And as you can tell, these are David Fincher and Christopher Nolan covers. Which would mean that I have all of my Christopher Nolan and all of my David Fincher stuff in the back. Which, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not gonna go through and show you everything. Well, I am, but, you know, not in, in any extreme uh, detail. It's just, uh, yeah. Just, just know that there is a bunch of limited editions and collectible releases for films by those two directors right behind here. Then we come to my retro editions and these are basically like modern films which have been released as limited editions on VHS or in very retro style cases. You know the Maniac release from Mondo Video, Beyond the Black Rainbow, also from Mondo, awesome release and then just a bunch of other films which sort of followed uh, the same uh, yeah, the same uh, style. And here are some uh, German heart boxes, which, you know, I, I put them in the same place because they tend to have like the same sort of uh, retro style uh, artwork, I guess. I need to get a move on, otherwise, I don't know, I think the battery is gonna die on me if I keep filming for too long. More covers. Can't remember what I have back here. Oh, God. I don't even know if there's a category to this, I don't think so. Just DVDs, which I don't really know what they are. Probably wouldn't be able to find any of those if I was looking. Then we have here are some boxes which are thicker, so there's not actually anything behind there. Then down here we have more Swedish VHS tapes, where you know I have a couple uh, from the same label. Yeah, it's just this. Then we get to another CD tower with more covers, VHS uh, most of the time, but sometimes also I do like a DVD box sets, and you know it all depends on what I want to show and what I feel is fitting. Then we get to my Matrix corner, or well, there's also Event Horizon, but yeah, most mo mostly it's it's Matrix uh, Matrix releases. And then comes Alien. This is Super 8, this is VHS, awesome face hugger box set when it was just a trilogy. DVD box set, limited edition as well. Then we got the Alien Head, which is also, you know, the DVD release where you can put the, the discs in the, in the head if you want to do that. And uh, yeah, just some various limited edition stuff. And yada yada. Oh, then we got more covers. I'm trying to remember if I have anything behind here. Yeah, here's like a bunch of stuff which I really don't have a need to show. It's basically like, you know, like a box set of friends, like all my Seinfeld box sets, as well as a big ass Futurama box set. You know, like my TV series. I generally don't buy TV series anymore, but I, I did uh, for a while when it was sort of we didn't have Netflix and stuff. But then we would watch Seinfeld on DVD, like in the old days. Here is a bunch of yellow tapes, apparently. These are actually two labels. First one is VCM, it's a Swedish label. Uh, so here are all of my VCM 
tapes and then seeing as these were yellow I thought well might as well put the other yellow label from Sweden at the same place. Here are two from Saga Film but otherwise it's all from a Celti video as you can see and they were generally yellow so I thought it looked good to have them sort of uh, color coordinated like this. Uh, then we got more covers, just various covers and there's also stuff in the back but I'm not really sure as far as categories here. Yeah, I think these are sort of like drama, comedies, you know, at least not horror movies. I've, I've si tried to keep some kind of organization. There's like all my comedies, I think. Not too much of that. Whoops. It's close. Are you, are you not gonna stay there now? I don't have time for this. And then last bottom row, more tapes from the same label or various labels. These are all Swedish. Video trade, crown video, what is this? Nordic film group? Yeah, that's uh, just a bunch of tapes from the same uh, label. We're nearing the end, just stay with me. More tapes, same label, called the Juno Media. Classic Juno Media. And also, yeah, it's just stuff from the same label. Old video tape covers. Here are some more retro editions, but mainly like retro editions on DVD. A lot of the, the time you would get like these DVD VHS combos. And then I sort of put the DVD editions to the stuff here for now. It's not really a finished section by any means. More tapes. I don't know. Yeah, some Japanese editions. Japanese tapes. As well as a couple of Australian ones. Oh yeah, here is my Terry Gilliam corner. And yeah, basically... Not too much stuff, but I do like to keep certain directors in the same place when it comes to the organizing. Here is the Terminator Endo Skull DVD player. Yeah, I do that every time, but just so you know, it's actually a DVD player. As well as some Terminator releases on the side there. Then we got my... Oh god, what's his name? Shawshank Redemption. What the fuck is the guy's name? Frank Darabont. Alright, my Frank Darabont section. Various Frank Darabont movies, collectibles, stuff. Oh, this is kind of fun. I don't know, I probably showed this before. I think this was sort of around the time when I stopped making videos on a regular basis. This is an actual Queen Mary tin box set, like the one seen in the film. The exact same type that they used, because it is a real vintage tin box set. So I actually tracked down an original tin, exactly like the one in the film. Thought that was kind of cool detail, uh, but yeah, this is all my all my Frank Darabont stuff. And lastly, at the top here, just some more VHS editions from Sweden. A lot of these were were really collectible, uh, so I put them up here. They are same label a lot of the time, but mainly I just threw some stuff up here that which I didn't really want at the low sections, just in case something happened. I don't know what's gonna happen, like a flood or I don't know, uh, but just some like expensive tapes. And uh, yeah, that is basically it for the full run through. Hope you enjoyed it and I'm sorry if the video sort of gets tinted like, oh sorry, now I'm zooming, tinted yellowish towards the end or in, in sections. Just does that sometimes when I'm filming uh, for long periods of time. But yeah, leave your comments, thoughts, questions, whatever. Yeah, this is the current collection as it looks now. And uh, really hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, hope to see you all next time.